As I mentioned, I was walking through the partial denture department the other day and I noticed a lot of carts over by the call center where doctors had to be called back. And, you know, we know doctors aren't happy about the delay in a case. It could take an extra week while we play phone tag back and forth. So I wanted to go over the same case and look at it three different ways. This happens to be, um, you can see it's a cast metal base and we have valplast. I just marked a little valve there so we can keep in mind which one that is, that's Valplast. Here's that same case being seen with metal and uh, with acrylic. And the same case with the material that we looked at uh, a few weeks ago, something called Duraflex. And, uh, and it has some nice benefits to it uh, as well. So we're gonna look at these different materials just to give you kind of an idea on an identical case, how we might be able to uh, do these a little differently. And so we'll refer to these as as vinyls when we talk about like the, the Duraflex and the Valplas for that matter. And, and the neat thing about vinyls is that they can flex well into an undercut on a tooth. And uh, that makes it a pretty good aesthetic answer to retention because we can now take, you can see how these clasps come and engage the undercuts on these teeth and do it in such a way that it's not going to be readily apparent to anybody looking into the patient's mouth while the patient's talking, you know, typically on these lower uh, arches as the patient gets older and the lip starts to sag, we lose a bit a little, little bit of lip support and you can start to see more of that. So it's a really nice way to be able to engage some undercuts with either uh, the Valplast or the Duraflex, but they can only flex so far. There, there is a limit here and the ideal undercut is probably about two to three tenths of a millimeter um, is about as far as we can go. If it locks in any more than that, it's going to be difficult and if uh, it does have a severe undercut um, the clasp is going to end up covering uh, much of the tooth and so uh, many times we'll make a recommendation to a doctor or you could do it on your own to consider some line uh, angle modifications so we can place the clasp properly without having to uh, cover the whole tooth and we definitely receive cases as well where the tooth has no undercut and so if the tooth is you know not very bell, bell shaped if it doesn't get you know, skinny around the cervical third, and uh, there are certainly teeth that are shaped that way, um, you can actually kind of create your own uh, rest on your own, not rest, I should say, but your own height of contour, I guess would be a better way uh, to say that. So uh, after delivery of the partial, you can still have it made and have an aesthetic clasp like this made, and then you can place composite um, above that. You can mark it with a little flowable, you can just pack some uh, on yourself or you can mark uh, that area on the tooth um, with a little skin marker or something and then take the partial off and then build a little composite and just bond it into place just a clusal to where that um, clasp is and yeah it takes a little bit of skill to kind of create a uh, height of contour on your own but as you go in with discs and polish it off you know first the time you try it back on partial won't snap into place over that little bulge there uh, but as you go in with this and kind of bring it back a little bit and bring it back and finally get it in, um, you've got something that's going to be there forever. When it's bonded, when that composite resin is bonded to enamel, even with this vinyl clasp going back and forth over it a couple times a day, um, nothing is going to move uh, in the case of uh, that uh, composite being bonded to the enamel. It won't come off, in other words. Uh, aesthetically, if we look at these two, like the Duraflex and the Valplast, or even we bring in the acrylic as well. You know, the acrylic, we're all familiar with what that looks like. You know, that is the uh, typical standard gingival acrylic. And um, it's pink, obviously, so it comes closer to matching gum tissue than and obviously the teeth or the clasps do. But, you know, you and I both know that when we put that in the patient's mouth, it really doesn't blend uh, with the gingiva all that well. And that's one of the neat things about the vinyls with the Duraflex and the Valplast, you can see it's more translucent, especially the Duraflex. Look how you can see through the clasp, you can see some of the yellow uh, underneath there. And so it's kind of like putting a translucent uh, empress veneer um, on a tooth stump that's a desirable color. And part of the nice part is with it being translucent, the light will go in and light up everything. And the same thing happens here. The more translucent this is, the more uh, the patient's natural tooth shade comes through. And we do have a couple different colors in the Duraflex, and I realize it's a little difficult since there isn't a shade guide for that, you know, how to know to ask for the dark or the light. So I, I typically will just send a picture of the patient's gingiva in when doing either a Duraflex or a Valplast partial to give them a, a better idea of what we're trying to match. We can't, you know, hit it perfectly, but the more translucent it is, um, the better it's going to look. Now, for example, if we look at this acrylic partial, 
Since we have acrylic here, we can't make the clasps out of acrylic like we were able to do on the Valplast and the Duraflex where it's okay to carry that clasp around there. And so on something like this, we've had to go and hide the clasps. And the way we do this aesthetic clasp is by actually uh, engaging the undercut on the distal side of these cuspids. If I can get this little guy off of here. And you'll see now that we have the clasp right along here. So it is going to engage on the distal of um, that cuspid. And that can work if in fact we have you know, that undercut on the tooth itself. Or we can create that undercut. Or perhaps this tooth needs a crown. And then certainly our combination department will build that undercut into the crown so that the partial, uh, will, the clasp will fit right into that and we're able to do it. So even though we have that clasp there that you see, when we seat this back down onto the model, you'll notice that it, it is an aesthetic clasp because it's not visible from the front. If you turn it way over to the side, of course, you can see that. But the cheek is always over there, and so that's not going to be a big deal. Now, the one warning about this type of clasp, when, anytime you're engaging a distal undercut like this, it's really o only going to work well on a tooth-borne uh, partial like this one. That, that type of design, engaging the distal of, of a cuspid, for example, is not going to work uh, on a free-end partial. We need to have this vertical stop here uh, for this type of retention to work. If we're biting down and this tooth is missing and, and we're biting down, this is simply going to rotate back if we don't have that stop. So there are limitations to when we can do those aesthetic metal clasps. So we want to make sure that um, uh, it's not a free end case because it's not going to work uh, very well there. So it is, you know, aesthetic clasping and we get a nice intimate fit here with metal that we probably couldn't get with any other material there on that apron. I mean, it really gives a nice fit as it works against the lingual uh, of those teeth. And uh, of course, the other nice part about this being uh, uh, tooth borne and having this rest here is that it's not tissue borne. It's not going to impinge on the tissue as the patient bites down and dig into that tissue. And here's another model that I grabbed while I was over there. This has been sent in from a dentist uh, to have a, a lower partial made. You can see a bilateral free end and you can see that the technician has already marked with the surveyor to show where the height of contour is. And so this is a good example of a case where, uh, whether it be a valplast uh, clasp such as that one or a Duraflex, Duraflex clasp such as this one, it would have to cover um, the entire tooth in order to be able to kind of engage that undercut uh, because it's not as strong as a metal clasp would be. So when we see something like this with the height of contour, is marked that high up on the tooth. This is really a good example of where an eye bar would be more appropriate. You know, this is one of the times where, you know, with an eye bar, we're going to be able to get some good retention down here without having to cover the whole tooth. Because as aesthetic as these clasps might look on these two examples, if you take that and cover the tooth all the way up to here, that pink tooth is not going to be very aesthetic and you're probably better off with an eye bar that's going to end you know right about there so uh, anytime you've got that height of contour and it's so high up on the tooth as you can see there that's when we start looking uh, for an eye bar itself and this is a case um, just in terms of one other thing where if the dentist had prepped let's say a cingulum rest here and a cingulum rest here um, all of a sudden we could have done the metal apron like this with a couple of rests and we have a much better chance of when the patient functioned on this denture that it wasn't digging in uh, to the tissue and just driving them crazy and knocking the gingiva down next to uh, the cuspids as well. This is a really good area. Anytime, anytime we have teeth left, we're going to want to rely on them for a stop. But of course, you know, if we have a molar here, it's very easy to do an occlusal stop. Uh, and we have this whole surface, this whole flat surface like we have on this bicuspid. But because of the slant on the lingual surfaces of these anterior teeth, we're going to need to go in and prep uh, a little rest prep uh, here and here. And then we're going to have a frame that's not going to want to overseat. And as always, our partial denture department and our combo department is more than happy to help you design uh, a denture like this if you want to send a study model in prior to taking the final impression. And they'll send you back a little roadmap showing you where they want you to, what kind of rest they want you to do and where they want you to do it. Or if they want you to come in here and reshape this or add some composite to a tooth, to the facial of a tooth, so you can engage the undercut with an aesthetic vinyl clasp on one of those cases. So we've got hundreds of years of knowledge in our partial denture department. And I know that I forgot the little that I learned uh, just a year or two after dental school because I didn't do that many partials. And I never knew that much to begin with, come to think of it. So 
take advantage of that uh, resource and uh, use our uh, partial denture department to help you uh, design a successful partial denture with the right guide planes and with the right uh, line angle modifications and rest preps. You and the patient are going to end up with a partial that you'll both be really happy with.